the news, President Buhari orders voluntary evacuation of Nigerians in South Africa. Over 600 Nigerians indicate interest to leave South Africa. And Zimbabwe begins funeral plan for Mugabe, dispatching plane to bring back Daddy from Singapore. Hello and welcome to News Now. I am Fidelia Aguncha. President Mohamedou Buhari has given instructions for the immediate voluntary evacuation of all Nigerians who are willing to return home from South Africa. Buhari gave the order after he received the report of the special envoy sent to South Africa to convey a special message to President Cyril Ramaphosa about the recent xenophobic attacks in the country. According to a statement by the President's special media aide, Femi Adeshina, the special envoy, Ahmed Abubakar, conveyed the deep concern of Buhari and Nigerians about the attack. Adeshina further disclosed that President Buhari stressed the need for South African government to take visible measures to stop violence against citizens of broadly African nations. Buhari also pledged to work with the South African government to find a lasting solution to the involvement of few Nigerians in criminal activities in the foreign country. Meanwhile, the Nigerian mission in South Africa says no fewer than 600 Nigerians have indicated interest and registered to be evacuated from the country. Chairman Diaspora Commission Abike Dabiri Arewa said this while briefing journalists in Abuja after appearing before the Senate Committee on Diaspora over the recent xenophobic attacks in South Africa. She said those that have registered with the Nigerian Authority in South Africa would be flown back home in two batches as soon as arrangements have been concluded. Chairman Senate Committee on Diaspora also revealed that there is interparliamentary engagement between um, South Africa and Nigeria on how to permanently stop the attacks on citizens. With the uh, envoys briefing to the president and um, having everything in place, Mr. President will be taking a few more decisions, but we have to wait for the briefing from the envoy. But in the meantime, we'll continue to demand compensation for Nigerians that have been attacked in South Africa. And also, we know that eight policemen have been um, charged to court for, involved in for the involvement in killings of Nigerians in South Africa. And I think four more have been recently arrested. We are demanding that these investigations must end so that we can know exactly what is happening. So as it is now, the moves taken by government, Nigerians in South Africa are very excited about it and happy about it. And we continue to reiterate Mr. President's um, directive that no Nigerian should be treated anyhow, anywhere in the world. So we continue to work on that and assure Nigerians, wherever they are, that this government will continue to come to their aid. As for Nigerians in South Africa, they've also been adv advised to remain calm. Some, there are some shops in volatile areas. They've been advised, don't open your shops at this point in time while we continue to engage and ensure that we get justice for all Nigerians um, affected. And again, like we said, we continue to demand compensation from South Africa for what has happened to our, to our Nigerians. And don't forget that also the woman that was killed that went for a conference, Ms. Elizabeth Chuku, was still waiting for the results of the investigation. They promised us they would get us the results and we're waiting for the results. And also there must be consequences for actions. If policemen or your people go out killing people and nothing happens to them, then um, it will continue to happen. So South Africa should continue to show the political will to talk to their people to put a stop to it. We are also further assured that uh, the options on the table are much and such a way to achieve the strategic objective of ensuring that we no repeat of what has happened. And of course, in terms of uh, taking a precautionary method they are to protect the life of Nigerians, a uh, register has been opened for which Nigerians who voluntarily elect to return back to the country have uh, signified their interest and effort is on to ensure that they are brought back I mean, to, to the country, both with the effort of the uh, private uh, airline and also the government will also see what it can do in that uh, regard. Still on the xenophobic crisis in South Africa, international affairs analyst Bola Akintarewa says continental integration is key to ending their attacks. 
The former Director General of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs said this while reacting to renewed attacks on foreigners in South Africa. Akinterewa urged the African Union to insist on the implementation of continental integration to improve relationship between all African countries. If the African Union strongly believes in its own agenda, the uh, agenda 2063 is there, one major component, one major element of it is continental integration. Xenophobic attacks necessarily you know, impede, negate continental integration. You say you don't want foreigners in South Africa, but the African leaders are preaching the sermon of uh, integration. That's contradiction. So what the African Union should do is to draw the attention of the South African governments to the implications of working against continental integration. So if um, South Africa doesn't want that, we either have a situation of a continental integration without South Africa, or we have it with South Africa, then they must now accept the rules of the game. Lagos State remains a safe haven for business and investment. This is a statement of Governor Babajide Sangolu, who paid a visit to some malls affected by reprisal attacks due to the xenophobic crisis in South Africa. Sangolu noted that thousands of workers from the affected businesses have suffered losses as a result of these attacks. He advised business owners to build positive engagement with their communities so as to be acceptable by the people. The governor had visited shoprite malls in Aja and Surulere areas of the state. The government will have come out to condemn this, but to also give them the assurances that we will give I will continue to en ensure that ease of doing business is paramount for us, you know, right? Um, security of property is part of the to-do list for us, right? And that's why we're, we're, we're charging our security operatives to stop at nothing, to ensure that they keep all of these facilities safe and, and, and secure, right? And we'll also be speaking and be discussing with the senior hierarchy of, of, of the police to find out what they are going to do with a lot of people that have been found because some of these things are clear rope. So we, we need to be able, you know, to take the lessons out of this and let's be stronger together, you know, to be able to take the corrective measures and know that things like this, right, should certainly not repeat itself, you know, in our community. The election of Kolapo or Sonsoya House of Reps member representing Ijebu Central Federal Constituency has been nullified. Otosonya was sacked by the election petitions tribunal sitting in Abel Kuta, Diogun State capital, on Monday. The tribunal, led by Justice Wakil Gana, cancelled vote from three wards in the Jebu Central Federal Constituency. The tribunal thereafter ordered a rerun election to be conducted within 90 days. The People's Democratic Party candidate Taiwo Shote had filed a petition challenging Otosonya's declaration as winner of the February 23rd poll over claims of irregularities. Well, still on judicial matters, the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal in Kaduna State has upheld Nasir El Rufai's victory as the duly elected governor of the state. Delivering judgment on Monday, Chairman of the three-man panel, Justice Ibrahim Bako, said the petitioner Issa Ashiri of the PDP was unable to prove his allegations of massive rigging and irregularities in the poll. The suit was therefore dismissed for lacking in merit. Erufai, who represented the All Progressives Congress in the March election, polled over 1 million votes to Ashiru, who scored 814,168 votes. And to security matters now, the Nigerian army says it has killed scores of terrorists after a raid by troops of 22 Brigade in Gorega village within Dikwa local government area of Borno State. Army spokesperson Colonel Sajer Musa announced this in a statement on Monday. According to the statement, the raid was conducted in conjunction with the civilian joint tax force, local vigilantes and hunters. The army recovered AK-47 rifles and 66 7.62 millimeter ammunition 
Mr. adds that no soldier was killed, wounded, or missing in action, but a hunter sustained injuries and is now receiving treatment. Still on security, operatives of the Nigerian police force have killed three kidnappers and arrested 26 others in Kaduna State. Spokesperson of the command, Yakubu Sabu, says the arrested suspects are notorious for terrorizing travelers and residents along the Kaduna Abuja and uh, Kaduna Zaria highways, as well as other parts of the state. Seven of the suspected kidnappers were apprehended by a combined team of police operational units, while the remaining 18 suspects were apprehended during a raid at Barebri in Igabi local government area. Upon interrogation, the suspects confessed to being responsible for the abduction of six persons, including students of Amadubelo University of Zaria. Nigerian youth have been charged to consolidate on the positives in the country rather than harp on the obvious faults. Special advisor to President Muhammad Buhari on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, made the call at the first edition of the Niger Youth Talk, organized by the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, in Abuja. He says Nigeria is a lovable country in spite of its unlovable status and must be protected by all. When Nigeria walks, who does it work for? For us. For us. Particularly young people, we have a stake in the future of this country. We have a stake in the success of Nigeria. We have a stake in a Nigeria that works. And a Nigeria that works is the Nigeria we want. We must play a role in that by loving the unlovable, loving Nigeria with all its faults. There are many faults in this country. So youths, my challenge today is that let us love this country. Let us, like William Cowper said, Nigeria, with all thy faults, I love this still, my country. And that will lead us to the country we want. Young people are really the body and soul of this nation and of, of any or any nation. This is your time, this is your turn, and this is your future. It is easy for one to look at this as a challenge to national development. And truly it can be if it is not properly managed and harnessed. However, if the youth population are properly managed, they become a real demographic dividend and an ingredient to national development, a bridge and transition to a prosperous future for this nation and for the world at large. Until we get the governors on the same page, I think that we're going to be in this situation where we are for quite a long time. So the state governors, the local governments must get in this conversation. As much as we are talking about policy, framework and regulation, we also need to put money where our mouth is. And, and when we put this money to teaching these kids, how are we ensuring that this money moves from Abuja or if it's moving from the state government to these various local governments or the IDP camps? Because uh, in doing this, what it means is we're also reducing the out-of-school children, we're ensuring that we create equal rights and equal opportunities for these children. Well, more Nigerians have been reacting to the closure of the Senate border. We'll bring you details on that stories and more after this break. Don't go away. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those they are silly lies. And wait up. Do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our Commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. 
Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. We will now join Oin Adekunle for News in Business. Hello, Oin. Hi, Fidelia. So tell me, what's making headlines over there? Well, mixed reactions have continued to trail President Muhammadu Buhari's directive to shut Nigeria's border with Benin Republic. According to the president, the closure will address smuggling activities and proliferation of small arms. But his defense has been criticized by analysts who say Nigeria needs food security and not food self-sufficiency. Adeshewa Odushoga tells us more. Since assuming office in 2015, the president Muhammadu Buhari led administration has been working to attain self-sufficiency in agricultural production. To these effects, the president has taken several measures to control the smuggling of food items as well as curb excessive importation into the country. Partial closure of the Nigerian borders with Benin Republic is the latest of such measures. We have had massive, excessive importation of food items and manufactured products that have undermined the local economy, manufacturing and even farming. So I think that we need to clearly uh, disaggregate the issues so that we do not undermine our own security. But what we have said is that in spite of the security uh, challenges, we would like that government takes a critical look as to how to maintain the delicate balance of allowing economic activities to uh, flourish whilst uh, creatively uh, checking insecurity. I believe that what needs to be done is to strengthen the institutional capacity of both the customs and the Nigerian Immigration Service to effectively police the borders. And we should also ensure that we improve on our criminal justice system. The president had also recently ordered the Central Bank of Nigeria to ban the sale of forex to importers of food into the country. But Mena says this directive undermines the independence of the CBN. I think that the president merely expressed uh, his view. Yes, he, he did mention that he has asked the CBN not to give, but as you can see, the, DBN, uh, the CBN will have to carry out some due diligence. It will have to do some impact assessment in its own way as to, be how, uh, as to how to be guided to implement uh, that directive if ultimately it has to. Uh, almost 60% of the items on that list are actually food items or agro-related items. Rice, of course, is inclusive. So I think what the president was just saying was just uh, trying to further underscore or emphasize uh, the policy position of both the government and the Central Bank of Nigeria. According to reports, Nigeria is the largest producer of rice in West Africa, but ironically the highest importer globally. The country consumes almost 7 million tons of the staple food yearly, but produces only 3.7 million tons. This, however, cast a doubt on the country's self-sufficiency of rice production. Government also has a role to play in stimulating uh, increased production locally so that you do not have what could become an artificial scarcity. If you assume that all the rice that is being sold in Nigeria is local rice, I mean, you'll be grossly mistaken. I mean, because we still see foreign rice in the market. So for us to be able to ascertain to what extent we have been able to achieve full sufficiency and we need to have our figures right. When we talk about policy of import restriction, for it to have the kind of desired outcome, it has to be complemented with the building of local capacity. I think the appropriate thing to do is to have to do those things simultaneously. We should build domestic capacity to meet our food demand. To further boost local production of food items, especially rice in Nigeria, the Central Bank of Nigeria set up a $130 million initiative 
offering farmers who have at least one hectare of land loans at a 9% interest rate, which is below the benchmark interest rate of 14%. Adesha Wadushaga, TV360 Lagos, Nigeria. Experts in the Nigerian economy have asked the federal government to improve in its task tax collection system as well as redesign its economic policies. A senior accountant made this call while briefing journalists after a seminar organized by the Accounting Students Association University of Lagos chapter. He said the likelihood of the Nigerian economy to grow beyond its present status is not sure as there were wrong people in the leadership of the country's affair. Our focus as a country to be able to change our narrative is to redesign our political system as well as our economic policies. So we have a political system that is producing the wrong people. And when you have wrong people in leadership, it's unlikely that things will work. Because even when they mean well, they may not be competent to deal with issues. And Nigeria have a lot of brilliant people. So it's just that the system is not recognizing them and we're not putting our best foot forward. The second issue is to do with economic policies. We should include monetary policy, fiscal policy. We should not design the tax system to overtax the poor people. Because life is already difficult. So we should focus on the top 1% of society. Like I said, if you have 3.5 million naira income in a year, you're already in the top 1%. According to the NDIC, less than 1.4 million Nigeria have up to 500,000 in their account, so which means there's poverty in the land. We we'll proceed on a short break now, and after that, it will be time to review activities on the stock market today. Don't go away. Well, the continued absence of positive market catalyst caused stocks to sink lower at the Nigerian market today. Key indicators dropped by 0.21%, while the market capitalization of all listed equities stood at 13.178 trillion naira, and that translates to about 28 billion naira loss in total market value. The overall index was dragged, bound, dragged down, I beg your pardon, by the performance of Nestle, which maintained this same position in previous session. Stambic share price also fell by 1 naira from 37 naira to close today at 37. Six naira. We also see that Dangote Sugar and Owando equally witnessed sell-offs with a percentage 7.4 uh, with a percentage of 7.49 um, price load shared. And of course, meanwhile, we see that um, Nigeria's largest listed oil and gas firm by market value, that Seplat, topped the price gainers today. And Seplat surged 7.12 percent, or 28 naira 30 kobo, to close at 426 naira. It is followed by USCN, which indeed has not been doing bad in the past few days, recording a price gain of 55 kobo as well. Good day, of course, for Guarantee and PZ questions as well. And in summary, over 4.2 and um, 4 million naira was realized in the sale of 290.490 million units of shares. And when we move on to the foreign scene, we see that um, FTSE closed in the red. FTSE conditions are generally uncertain. There is U.S.-China trade war, Brexit, economic concerns. And then recent figures suggest that U.K. economy could be slowing down. So you can actually see that investors really do have a lot to take in um, in um, the FTSE now. And of course, we see Dow Jones Industrial Average is, however, treading cautiously with a surge of 0.20%. Nikkei also closed in the greens for today. That's it on business. It's back to Fidelia. Well, thank you Uli, for that update. It seems it's another day of loss for the NSC, fourth Sadly. consecutive day, I must mention. Well, let's now move on to the foreign scene. The body of Robert Mugabe, <clears throat> former president of Zimbabwe, is expected to arrive the country on Wednesday. Leo Mugabe, the late president's nephew and family spokesperson, said a charter plane left Harare for Singapore to fetch the body of the ex-leader on Monday with some relatives and government officials. Mugabe's family has, however, rejected government plans to bury him at the National Heroes Acre Monument, 
a site reserved for the country's heroes. Jared Mandelin said that he's buried in his home village of Kutama. Mugabe died on Friday, aged 95, in Singapore, where he had long received medical treatment. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson will formally suspend Parliament for five weeks, beginning from Monday night, as he employs every possible tactic to ensure that Britain leaves the European Union as planned on October 31st. The Prime Minister's office confirmed that parliamentary business will stop after Monday's session, meaning that lawmakers cannot sit, debate or pass laws until October 14. Meanwhile, opposition lawmakers say they would not back an election until the Ben Bill, a new law which would extend the Brexit deadline until January 2020, is enacted. But Johnson, in his first meeting with Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar, insists he would keep his promise on leaving the EU on time. And in sports, Nigeria's Super Eagles is set to face Ukraine's yellow and blue national team on Tuesday in an international friendly build for Nipro Arena in Ukraine. Kickoff time is 7.30 p.m. A win for the Eagles will see the team's coach, Gennot Raw, make history as the first manager to lead an African team to beat Ukraine in a full international game. It will also end the seven-year and uh, 20 friendly games on beating run of the yellow and blue since 2012. Well, that's it on news now. Many thanks for joining us. I am Fidelia Agoncha. Bye for now.